All right, guys, welcome to uh, Wine for the People, uh, Australia Uncorked. Uh, I'm Brennan Carter. I'm Laura Carter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're from Unicozello in Adelaide Hills, South Australia. So winemakers, founders of, of this incredible business, uh, and of course, we absolutely love wine. And we're gonna be having a bit of fun with you guys over the next 45, 50 minutes. Firstly, we want to know, we, it is a live show, it is legitimately live, we have a team here watching your questions and comments, so if you've got any wine related questions, now's the time to just keep plugging them in. Um, but firstly, Law, would you like a glass of wine? I would love a glass of wine. Now it's actually a really, it's a special day, well it's technically the day after a very special day, every day is a special day. But yesterday was a very particularly special day. It only happens once a year. Do you know what day, that day was? Yeah, yesterday was Sabraj Day. Sabraj Day. Sabraj Day. It's like my favourite day of the year next to Christmas. Yeah, and, and, and probably a lot of people wouldn't know what it is, but Brendan has offered to demonstrate. So Sa Sabraj quite literally, literally comes from uh, a, a, a very point in French history where, yeah. uh, you know, and Napoleon, he, he loved champagne. He was really, really, really big into champagne. So he would, he would come with soldiers and they'd all celebrate and they'd, they'd get off their horses, they'd grab the bottles of champagne and they'd knock the tops off with a sword. And I thought, what a dope way to start this show. And here I have behind us a pre prepared this is a legitimate Sabraj sword, and I thought we could either be very successful or create an internet meme without intending to. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, why not? I mean, it's Saturday. Let's touch. Have you ever done this before? I haven't, but I, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend doing this at home. Make sure that you actually do know what we're doing. We do, of course, we, we are trained in these kind of things. Yeah, and if um, you are gonna do it, do it outside. Do it outside, of course. Also a good recommendation. Bottle pointing away from people, um, and you wanna be sliding up. Do not hit down on this. That, that is a very bad thing to have happen. And in one smooth motion, just. Oh. <laughs> like that. Can I have a glass, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cheeky little sparkling to start off the day. So, uh, shall we describe to these lovely people what we are going to be doing over the next 45 minutes? So, we thought what we'd do today is we've got, I think, eight different wines. Oh, no, we've got more, 10. Oh, man, 10 different wines. We've only got 50 minutes to do this. We've got 10 different wines from all around Australia, and we thought we would we would talk about the regions of Australia in the context of wine. In the context of wine. So, this is a rapid fire blind tasting. So, that literally means We've tasked our team to go out and grab some of the most exciting wines from across and historic and iconic wines from across yeah. every single state. That was the criteria. At least one wine from every single state. Sorry, Northern Territory, you just don't actually make a lot of wine, but we'd love to know if you did. Um, and we don't even know what they are. We don't even know what order they're in, and we're going to be tasting these things in black glasses. We don't even know the color of them. But we're going to showcase something really, really fascinating to you guys. And that's the, the fact that these flavors of Australia are so incredibly unique that as wine professionals, we can actually tell exactly where they come from. Mm. I mean, sometimes. We're gonna probably fail hardcore with a lot of them, but it's gonna be really good fun. So firstly, um, join us, obviously, for a glass of wine. It is the end of the day. Um, crack a bottle open, and if you're not on, on, the, on the wines, you're probably on the beers. Um, but join us anyway for a bit of fun, and we're gonna talk about how great our rural regions are and making some of the most amazing Venice projects and Venice expressions uh, that, uh, that the world indeed has ever seen. Australia's a very famous place for wine. But um, we're getting on with the first wine. Here we go, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Ooh, Ooh hello. Ooh, all right, tell us about, tell us what, what you're picking up straight away, straight off the bat. There's, there's something amazing about this thing. It's, it's called autolytics, and that's a real nerdy, nerdy way to say it's that, that sort of yeast born Very character. Very much autolytic, yeah. yeah. It's like that, um, probably the most similar thing is like fresh brioche or um, pizza dough um, when that's. It's a bit of an odd thing to taste in wine, right? Yeah. It's a very, very odd thing to taste yeah, in wine. It only comes from a very few styles of wine. Well, this style, I can already tell from the smell. Okay, this style is definitely sparkling. I haven't even tried it yet. And Australia's pretty famous for a lot of sparkling wines, right? Yep, yep, and quite a few regions. Uh, Adelaide Hills, where we are, mm -hmm. um, does some sparkling wine. Tasmania, of course, and then over in Victoria, too. Um, so we're really talking about cool climate. Oh. Yeah, but regions. try this, try this. There is not, there is not many, many regions that could produce something like this. It is flinty, it is delicate, but it has a robustness, mid palate weight, mm. super luscious. The actual bubble, the mousse. So is, fine. It, super fine. Yeah. I reckon, what do you reckon? Where do you reckon this comes from? What's your stab? Well, for me, it's obviously someone that's got a lot of experience making sparkling and it's got a bit of age on it too. So there's just so much complexity. God. There's only one place. There's really only one place. 
Tasmania. I reckon it's Tasmania. All right, where, where are we, Noah? What are, what are we got here? What do we got here? Oh, we're gonna do the grand reveal. You say Tasmania? Mm. Yeah, I, I'd be pretty hard pressed to find anything other than Tassie here. Ooh, hello. I know a little bit about this one. 2015. 2015. 2015. So this this is current yeah. release as well, I believe. Yeah. So this is this is literally sat inside a cellar for you know four or five years mm. before actually getting released. Um, do you know this is actually really quite fascinating? Have you guys seen uh, this particular one before? So this is uh, it's actually pronounced. It's not Belbon. It's actually pronounced Belibon. Okay. Um, and the really thing I want to I want to attract your attention to, if you can actually make out underneath the name of the wine is a very important person in this industry, Natalie Fryer. Natalie Fryer. This is her latest thing. This is her, her thing that she is like really, really big in. Um, so this is, um, Natalie Fry is one of our foremost uh, sparkling winemakers. In fact, globally, she's one of the most uh, mm. sort of awarded uh, sparkling winemakers. Sat at the helm of Jantz, the, uh, the, the other uh, yeah, incredible. Yeah, probably our most famous um, sparkling producer in Australia. So Tasmania, Tasmania has an amazing reputation for this. And I was doing a, a little bit of research into some sort of viticultural nerdy mm. stuff today. Do you know that Tasmania has only around about 42 hectares of planted vines? What, that's it? Do you know Queensland has over 200 hectares yeah. of planted vines? 42 hectares of vine. There are some wineries in South Australia that, that like that's the size of the entire winery. And you're saying the All of Tasmania. The entire and this, state. The entire state, yeah. Only has like a, a tiny amount of... But yeah. think of the reputation yeah. that Tasmania has. And it's one of those raw, untouched places. One of the most picturesque places. I mean, and in fact, obviously one of the coldest places uh, yeah. that you can possibly go to. Which is why you could do sparkling there because the um, main thing about sparkling is that acidity. You need mm. um, either Pinot Noir or Chardonnay that's going to hold its acidity, pick a little bit earlier and then make it into sparkling wine. And of course... Tasmania. Tasmania is freezing almost all the time. It is pretty freezing all the time. I mean, at the, at the moment, Adelaide Hills is pretty cold, but this is pretty freezing. Yeah. Um, so jumping quickly across to question time. Uh, very quick question coming in uh, from uh, Nicholas. Uh, no, sorry, from uh, Christy Hewell. Thank you so much, Christy, for chiming in. Uh, I miss what your t-shirt means, Unico. Uh, Unico is the name of our, our name of our winery here in the Adelaide Hills. It literally means unique, uh, or you know, in the absence of anything, uniqueness. Uh, mm, mm. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Now we, we do have 10 wines to, to, to go on with and uh, Noah is at the ready, chomping at the bit to be able to bring us the next one. That was a really good wine. That was, um, was stunning, mm. in fact. That's, that's, that's probably one of the most amazing examples. of. In fact, Tyson Steltzer, I uh, was writing about this not so long ago, was one of the, the most amazing. Tyson's an amazing... Uh, and and it, he specializes in, in, in champagne And champagne writing, and sparkling yeah. wine. Um, literally blown away at the quality of this mm. in reference to all the sparklings in the world. So Tasmania, you know, really sort of pushing the, the boundaries on, um, and hitting well and truly above its viticultural yeah. weight, you know? Ooh, are, we, are you ready for the next one? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. And if so that's where we're starting, then that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So Unico, uh, Unique, that's our, um, or Unico Zello means unique seal in Italian. Um, mm. And we actually specialize in alternative varieties. So we make Fiano and Nerodabla. We don't make a whole lot of Shiraz and Pinot, like these classic, mm. um, wines and varieties but we love tasting them because they're where Australia started. It's literally the history and Australia's yeah. got a rich history, a very very rich history in, in crafting some of the most amazing wines um, right back from the 1800s in fact. Yeah. Um, all right shall we jump jump ahead, forge ahead mightily. Ooh, all right, very, a little bit closed. When we yeah, say it's a little bit closed, closed it's not like super volatile, it's not sort of jumping out straight at you. You almost need to search for this wine a little bit more. It's actually quite alluring, very seductive. Mm -hmm. Oh, that could be. If it wasn't for the tannin profile on this, I'd say, I would probably say that this is uh, Pinot. Yeah, but I was thinking the same thing, but um, it tastes a little bit more dark fruited than that. This is actually a really exciting wine. I, I find this I find this really fun because um, just the tannin, the ripeness, the richness, the density, the power, the weight. It's not so much. It's not. It's sort of what we call okay. This is what we call a lot of Italian varieties. A lot of things like mm. Sangiovese, a lot of um, Mediterranean varieties, even up to things like Tempranillo, yeah. are really going to be quite um, uh, medium weight, medium body, medium acid. We call them the Goldilocks varieties. 
uh, because they sort of sit in the middle for, for everything. Now, it could well be Pinot, but I kind of think yeah. it's got a... And because of that medium weight and medium texture, um, they're great with food, aren't they? These are, this is a wines, good drinking yeah. wine. And in Australia, particularly, we have so many, um, you know, a lot of our cities are by the coast, and we spend a lot of time outdoors, um, and the majority of the time, our weather is pretty mild, and these mm. are the kinds of wines that are just beautiful drinking out on the veranda. Absolutely. Uh, well, I'm going to take a stab at this. Um, I'm going to say that... Uh, this is a medium body variety. I'm going to say it's probably something like a Sangiovese. Yep. Um, yep, I'd agree with that. Could be, could maybe from the Riverland. Maybe from. Yeah, you know, or a bit even of, bit like of cool King rice. Valley. There's King Valley. Some Sangiovese planted there. Oh yeah, King, well King Valley, I think, is the the, the home. Right, we're going to go. What are we? What are we? King Valley. What are we, Noah? Where are we? Ho 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 ho. All right. What is this wine? This is an interesting one. What's that, Lou? Tempranillo. Temp well, all right. Oh, we got we got halfway there. I think we got halfway. So there. we well yeah. From the uh, Granite Belt. Originally from Spain, Tempranillo the variety. Uh, from the Granite Belt, so Queensland. From Queensland. From Queensland. Mm. Who would have thought humble old Queensland? A lot of people actually don't understand Queensland um, so much when it comes to wine because you know South Australia has a bit of a reputation. Tasmania has a bit of a reputation, right? Yeah. But. Queensland, though, I, I, I'm quite fascinated. I'm originally from Queensland. I'm, I'm a Brizzy boy, um, you know, adopted into South Australia. And did you know that, sort of, whilst up here, Adelaide Hills, we're known as like a cool region, cool climate region. You know, we've got elevation up here, yes, 500 yeah. metres above sea level. You go winding roads all the way, get up to, to Adelaide Hills. This starts, Granite Belt starts at about 650 metres above. And it goes to 1,300 metres above sea level. Yeah. So we're obviously very hot In fact, place. there's probably nowhere else in Australia that's that high of elevation. Maybe Tasmania? Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah. Uh, in terms of, maybe parts are in sort of like King Valley, maybe. Yeah. Like other parts of And Victoria, I guess that's but... why they can be so far north in Australia and so close to Brisbane, which is warm. But you, if you have the elevation... Um... Well, did you know they get 500 mil of rain a year? Yeah, perfect. 500 yeah. mil of rain a year. You know, that is like, that is less rain than we get in the other And they're in mm. Queensland. And this is actually a really cool, great uh, variety in general because it's such easy drinking. Like you can imagine, a, an actual wine itself needs to be really respondent to where it is grown and the people that mm -hmm. live around it. I, I could easily imagine sitting in good old Brizzy having a, uh, having a bit of a, a, a swill on this. But yeah. only two hours from Brisbane, Granite Belt. Yeah. Hop, skip and a jump. And if that's too far, make a weekend of it. Stay over, stay over the weekend, you know? It's actually a really um, beautiful place. So, this, and how, it's called so a, how long have they been growing grapes there? In Grand Belt, uh, quite a fair time. In fact, this is so Golden Grove. Golden Grove uh, was, I think, established in the 40s. Right. Like originally yeah. was established in the 40s, and I'm pretty confident it's still in the same family today. Yeah. So if you if you hear about stories like this coming from South Australia, oh yeah, mum, you know, grandma, great grandma established, you know, this amazing vineyard in the 40s. You know, that'd be one of the grandest estates by now. Mm. You know, it's just I think maybe because uh, in Queensland it's not it doesn't have a great reputation for it. But if they keep producing wines like that, they're going to get yeah. one. They're going to get them that are really smart. It's not Shiraz, but it's a different, it's a completely different take on these sort of things. Yeah. Well, um, even Adelaide Hills is only, you know, now it's a world renowned region, but it was established in mm. the 80s. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. only 30 it's years very, old. Very young. So you never know. Well, this is fun. This, I mean, this is one of those things with this particular variety, I feel that you can just absolutely jump straight onto. That is, if that's not Pinot, I don't know what is. Yeah, but. If that um, is not Pinot kind of like stemmy pinot it's not that real primary fruit um pinot like all oh, this is this is next level pinot mm -hmm. where does next level pinot come from in australia where do, obviously there's tassie pretty cold a bit too cold for this sort of richness of fruit but we're, we're really talking victoria yeah victoria tasmania does some some um, cool pinot, stuff but yeah victoria and lots of different regions of victoria doing amazing Pinot. I mean, if you were to pick, I mean, it's Yarra Valley, you known for amazing amounts of Pinot, but uh, I think that the pinnacle for me yeah. isn't isn't north of the city of Melbourne. It's south of the city of Melbourne, and it's so close. Yeah, where it's cooler, it's only an hour. Yeah, if yeah. that. I mean, you know, if you know the if you know the roads, yeah. uh, and you know the way around, uh, <laughs> I reckon you could be at both Yarra Valley and, and Mornington, mm -hmm. in fact. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a step. I mean, look, firstly, I feel this is totally Pinot. Yeah. I mean, you can tell from the smell straight away. It has smell, a really, yeah. really unique and, smell. And um, not a lot of tannin either, which is a um, always a hallmark of mm. Pinot. Beautiful, a little bit stemmy, a little bit green. Yeah. Very alluring. What, what have we got here, Noah? Um, 
So a couple of quick uh, questions. Uh, Kira, are the wines you're tasting today easy to find or can you purchase through the vineyards only? Mm. Look, if you do purchase through the vineyards, that's actually, it helps them out a lot. Yeah, um, especially this time. Are they easy to oh. find? I guess so, perhaps. Is this what it is? Oh, no, I think that's what it is. I've given you the wrong wine. Oh, we've had a reveal. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a look here. So, um, and what's your favorite drop from Kimberly? Favorite drop, favorite drop. It oh, depends. our favorite drop. Oh man, it depends on depends on what you're eating, who you're with, uh, what the season is. What music you're listening to, what yeah. food you're having with it. I, uh, hey! Um, Moradook, McIntyre, yep. awesome. Pinot Noir. Uh, Moradook Estate, yeah. Uh, Mornington Peninsula, one of the most amazing estates. Um, and relatively new, I think established in the 70s. And you yeah. can actually uh, go, go out and visit these guys. I always said hop, skip and a jump from Melbourne. Hop, yeah. skip and a jump, so close. Um, Sandy, where's the best Shiraz and best Cabernet Sauvignon? And is that Japanese riding on the jumper? Yes, it is mm -hmm. Japanese riding on the jumper. Uh, and where's the best Shiraz and Cabernet? Uh, look, we might have some tonight. Uh, it's not so much about where the best, like, great variety is. Every single region has a different interpretation. Yarra Valley Shiraz tastes wildly different yeah. to Barossa Valley Shiraz. Um, so it's not so much about the place. Uh, sorry, the, the, the variety is, is about the place. Um, and the wine and the vintage and all the other amazing things that come with with uh, really bottles wine. Moradick Estate. This is um, uh, absolutely cracking and single vineyard. So it's yeah. literally just one little plot. And that's only 2014. Um, and, oh man, that's looking yeah, super fresh. Yeah, it's gonna look awesome um, in five or six years. Too. Super, super fresh. All right, we're we're rocking and Next rolling. Wine. Oh, can I? Tides out, mate. Tides. <laughs> <laughs> How are we getting food? <laughs> um, Oh hello. Yeah right. I'm 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 into this. This is so we've definitely moved back into white territory. We're in white territory. And one of those amazing things about things like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, like brother yeah. and sister, yeah. really. And the thing about those two particular grape varieties, you can smell them, and boom, you can actually tell exactly what grape variety this thing is. Yeah, that's Chardonnay. And if it's not, it's probably a really good Fiano. <laughs> but it's it, it, I think it's Chardonnay. Um, Oh man, that is next level. The team have been really kind to us in finding these wines. The team have been really good. Um, yeah, wow. All right, Chardonnay of this level, Lord. And so Chardonnay has always, as long as I've worked in wine, um, now probably almost 10 years, Chardonnay is quite challenging for a lot of people. It's mm. either, you either love it or you hate it. Uh, and often it comes down to the oak as well. Like, the way Australia was making Chardonnay in the 80s mm. um, was with a lot of oak and that's sort of what we were famous for. But now, like this style and the Chardonnays that are coming out of whether it's Victoria or Tasmania, Adelaide Hills even, um, there's a lot more technique and delicacy to the wines. Do you know, all the time I encounter people like, you know what, I don't drink, you know, it was a, what we called ABC. Um, uh, what was it called? Anything but Chardonnay? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, but... Uh, Nowadays, I, I, I encounter a lot of people that actually go, you know what, I don't really like Chardonnay. But they love Chablis. Chablis is a tiny little area of France that is known actually for making lots of Chardonnay. They just call it Chablis. It's just a different style. Chardonnay is yeah. really like, you can you can play with this type of style really, really well. It's a wine style. But do you pick up on the one thing that gives, there's a tell. This wine tells you something. Mm -hmm. It's the salinity of it. Yeah. It is so saline, it's almost, it's almost really briny in a really, really, really seductive way. And it's offset with this amazing oak. This is a seaside place. You can tell that this is either grown, oh no, no, no high altitude, if it was high altitude, it just wouldn't be like this. No, no, it's got a bit more richness to it. Um, so we've got richness, we've got ripeness, we've got very high quality winemaking and it's saline. Where are we? We're definitely in Mike River. Where are we? Where are we? Mm -hmm. Let's and have so, a look here. Yeah, Margaret River, famous for Chardonnay and also a lot of Cab Sav. A lot of Cabernet, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Australia, yeah, humbly we call it Cab Sav. Cab Sav um, yeah. But no, this actually, uh, so this is a fantastic, mm -hmm. um, a fantastic Amazing producer. producer. Um, so we're looking here at um, uh, Lewin Estate Art Series, uh, 2015 Chardonnay. Now this here has an amazing story. This was uh, established, I think, I think in the 70s. Mm, um, yeah, it's but, quite a younger wine region. But the cuttings from this particular vineyard, this particular area, it's called the Jin Jin Clone, actually have have, have seeded most of Margaret River. And the only reason yeah. it's there is because of this guy called Robert Mondavi, 
who's oh, who's yeah. a god of of of, of wine the of the U.S. American yeah. wine. I started, you know, Rob Mondavi Cellars, uh, and um, and he, I think, it must have been mates with the people that that bought this vineyard. He just said, "Guys, Chardonnay is going to grow really, really well here." Yeah. Like, and Margaret River is so lucky, so lucky to get over a meter of rain a year. So everything's lush, everything's always green. And and we all know as winemakers, we kind of we call this, we say it's a dirt crazy. We're really, really crazy about uh, about the soil. Yeah. Right. We have really old soil here. Well, and that's part of how we're tasting today. Is You're thinking about the palate way, and the, and you know the soil type. If it's clay, if it's sandy, um, they're going to create different wines. Would you believe that this actually exists on a ridge that's only two million years old? Like the average soil mm. age in Australia is about 250 million years old. This is only two, and it's all fresh limestone. We don't have a lot of fresh limestone. Yeah. It's probably why the Chardonnay here is absolutely cracking. Absolutely cracking. All right, Noah. What else? I'm, I'm getting more and more excited because these seem to just keep going up and up and up. It's like crescendo. And I love, I love Margaret River because, um, man, the beaches there are so cool. Uh, the beaches surfing. there are cool. The wildlife is insane. The Lewin, uh, the, the forest, I think it's like, it's like Cape Lewin and Cape Naturalist. Naturalist. Yeah. Uh, and you can go through this amazing forest so there. So it's three hours south of Perth, but it's so worth the drive, isn't it? Because once oh, you get there, it's like stepping into just a whole new area. And and everyone is so laid back too. That's also what Everem I love about my It program. reminds me of Byron. It yeah. reminds me of going yeah. to Byron Bay, but a very, very different sort of vibe, but super laid back, super easy going, very, very fun. Um, and totally one of those like long weekend stays. Yeah, that is that sure. is definitely one of those long yeah. weekend stays. And, and what's the get to the and try this wine? It's the tavern there in Margaret River. Oh, what is the amazing uh, wine set, list? Um, Settlers. 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 Yeah. Settlers Tavern has one of the most the the most amazing wine Honest. list of a, of a rural of a rural town. Yeah. Honestly, uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, Sally Webb, uh, Brennan, do you think Lewin Shardy is one of Australia's greatest whites? Uh, what are a few others? Ooh. Absolutely one of Australia's yeah. greatest whites. Um, and I think I think we're trying one of the other ones now. Really? What's the smell like? Oh yeah, right, okay. <laughs> this is like, is this is what happens when you give your whole team a bunch of money. You say, go grab some killer wines. And they, they literally fulfill that. You can, uh, lemony pucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I know exactly what this is. Mm. Lemony pucker, it's got a little bit of age on the nose. There's not that many varieties that can have that intense acidity and age so beautifully too. And just, a this is so young. Yeah. This is, and I mean, when I mean young, I mean, we've drunk this 30 years too early. That's the that's the provenance of this particular mm. particular wine. A little bit herbaceous, a little bit green. Yeah. Lemony pucker is the giveaway. It's the tell. This is clearly semion. It's clearly semion. Semion is the only thing that really does it. There's only Greco maybe, but not not something with this level of degree of wine yeah, making. Yeah, it's that been... real lemon flavour. And where, where would, if you were to be grabbing semi, there's a couple of places, Barossa does it very well. Yeah. Eden Valley, Semillon, fantastic. Uh, there's a couple of little plots in the Adelaide Hills that we know of. Uh, I'm not too sure of much Semillon across uh, Victoria, but if we were gonna pick anywhere, I mean, oh, hey, Semillon in Margaret River could be back there. Yeah, they were, they were SSB, uh, Semillon Sablanc. Semillon Sablanc, but. Uh, but if you were gonna think iconic Semillon, mm. well, more traditional, particularly in this style, would be uh, Hunter Valley. Yeah, Hunter Valley do Semillon and they also do Shiraz. Uh, and as a winemaker, like such a weird region to make wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they start sometimes. Humid. They, yeah, and sometimes they start their vintage in December, like the yeah, year before. The year before, but they have special season. dispensation to start harvesting then, but call it that vintage because it is. So, what have yeah. we got here? Um, geez, we've got more wines at this. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. What do you, would you like to unwrap it, Lord? Sure. Yeah, and like definitely you could age this so much longer than we're just it tear apart. Yeah. <laughs> well hidden. Well hidden. Well hidden. What do we got? What do we got? That's right. Wow, 2012. 2012. 2012! What? Really? Yeah, right. That's incredible. You could have told me that was a year old. I would have mm. believed you. Check this out, guys. Um, now Sally, this this probably goes some length to answering um your other question, there are, Australia, hey, we do have a really amazing reputation for, for um, uh, red wine, of course, but hey, Lewin Estate Art Series Chardonnay, oh, no. amazing. That wine, Semillon, yeah. amazing. Tabil Khmarsan, yeah. amazing. Uh, like, and even like Clare Valley, Eden Valley Clare Valley Riesling, oh man, some of the yeah, old Vickery Jim Barry, Rieslings, yeah, Jim Barry's, oh man. Yeah, no, we, we have an incredible provenance of, yeah. of white wines that, um, that, you know, a lot of, it kind of slips under the radar a little bit, and because, because white wine typically isn't, um, 
I guess, I guess in that sense, I, and it sounds terrible, it sounds like valued as red wine. Typically the best deals that you can get are white wines. You yeah. know, you don't need to be spending three, four, five hundred dollars a bottle for these I made like bombastic style red wines. Yeah, because you can get you can get amazing white ones for like yeah. under hundred bucks. You know, especially and that's if you're treating yourself. But even as you further go down the, you know, typically you'll find a red equivalent of, of a white in the same range of a winery's portfolio, I guess. The white's always gonna be that little bit cheaper. Yeah. And it's actually a remarkable deal. So that's that's insider's tip, pro tip right there. Um, all right, jumping straight on to the next wine. Man, this is rapid pace. All right, we're, we're, yeah, I know. <laughs> this, this is rapid pace. Oh, man, we're only halfway. <laughs> it's halfway. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, all right. All right what are we? So we're I, back in red territory now. Right, you reckon? You reckon? All right. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, this one's gonna trip me up. Mm-hmm. A little bit herbaceous. It's the oak on it though. So it's definitely red, without a shadow of a doubt, it's red because it's so, it's got a richness, a lusciousness to this. It is really pretty. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not, oh man. And it's either a really, 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 really well made like Barossa Eden from a cooler vintage or it's, or it's gonna be um, something out of, I don't know, maybe Victoria. Yeah, I don't think it's Barossa. Barossa tends to have like a real plum and black currant flavor. All right, all right. Do you want to? We'll, we'll, we'll split the diff. We'll see who's right and who's wrong. Yeah. All right. I'm going. I'm going Barossa, Shiraz. You're going. Barossa, Shiraz. I reckon it could be like oh, a really cool man. climate, like Syrah thing. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> um. You wanna go Victoria? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll go Victoria. Victoria Shiraz. Here we go. It's not Pinot. It's not Pinot. I don't know, I don't know. Oh, so close, oh. wrong region. Oh. Yeah, right. Hey, yeah, well this done, is awesome. you did say Shiraz. Yeah, some sort of yeah. Shiraz, like and cooler climate cooler thing. Cooler climate Shiraz, you know, well done, gotta, yeah. Gotta, gotta take every win, you know, okay. gotta take every win, folks. This is fantastic, so yeah. this is, it's a bit of both worlds, actually. This is actually a really cool, uh, fun little one. So, uh, uh, Killer, Tim Kirk, Canberra. Canberra is what they call a homer climb of Adelaide mm -hmm. Hills. So, it means literally same climate, similar rainfall, similar heat summation, all that geeky data stuff. Basically, yeah. agriculturally, very similar. Soil type, though, very different. Um, now, how freaking lucky are our pollies in this country when they have this literally 30 minutes north and it's a straight shot it is a straight shot straight out of Canberra yeah. and you are in Murrum Bateman where this is now that's really fascinating because that is that you could that is a drinking Shiraz and that's not sort of saying that that hey it's super cheap or anything like that. I also think it's going to age remarkably well but interesting Shiraz Viognier yeah Viognier is a white grape yeah and it would be just a small percentage addition I imagine about nine, ten percent. Yeah, typically, and it just lifts the aromatics. It gives a lightness to the palate. I'm into this. Yeah, I'm... really, really fun wine. I um, used to sell this wine when I worked at Vintage Cellars. That was like my one of my first wine jobs. Um, mm. And people love this. This I think brand, it's not hitting hitting you in the face Viognier. or anything like that. Yeah. It's not so tannic. Yeah, really matured, really mm -hmm. aged, really fine. You know, cooler climate. It is a really cool climate. Yeah. Very quiet, and even out of Canberra district now, like there's a lot of surrounding wine regions, uh, and there's some cool younger producers working out of there too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Mal Malaluka, I think, is um, some, some doing some really cool stuff. Uh, Yuko Frost chimed in. Thank you so much. Good to see you again, Yuko. Um, what a great range of wine tonight. Is Wine Australia picking those ones? No, literally. Oh. We, <laughs> no, no. We literally just said, hey. To the team, why don't you guys go out and find some really cool wines for us to be able to talk about and really sort of take people through all the different areas inside uh, around Australia, particularly if, you know, a lot of these places, you've got to remember, you can like literally a hop, skip and a jump. And as isolation mm. stuff starting to relax a little bit, yeah. can't travel so much overseas, but man, it's such the perfect, perfect time to go out and rediscover all of our rural regions. And what better way to do that than to actually look at the different wine regions all the yeah. way across Australia. And we have so many, even in bloody Queensland. Even in Queensland, you guys have an amazing wine region, Brisbane. Go out and check them out, seriously. And, and hey, Polly's, keep supporting your local guys up north. And if not, other Canberrans out there, Well, I, so I was lucky. thinking today a great trip that we once did was we went to, uh, we were driving down from Queensland, but basically come out of Sydney and go to Barrel. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, that was Stay there and then travel down and you could drive from there down to Canberra District and do some of the wine regions down there. Yeah, don't think you have to fly everywhere. I yeah, mean, I, you could just drive. I reckon particularly this region is, yeah, jump in the car and... And drink responsibly, of course. Absolutely all the time. But, um, or, you know, do a bit of a deal, you know, we do that. You know, one day you drive, I, don't, I drive, yeah. you drive, I and drive. And we also have an um, interesting concept in Australia, destination restaurants. Like, not a lot of countries have this... Um, we have a lot of regional restaurants and the produce is beautiful and they're really premium restaurants. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So we are moving onwards and upwards. Mm. All right, so we've been to, so we've Queensland, been to Queensland, Canberra. Yep. Uh, we've been to Hunter Valley. Hunter Valley, yeah. In New South Wales, so about two hours drive north and a good drive as well. Go through Central Coast. You yeah. know, especially if you're in a, you know, jump on the bike and stuff like that. Oh, you're great, mm -hmm. great drive through there. Um, we've gone to Tassie, amazing sparkling wine, Mornington Peninsula, a beautiful, a yeah. utterly beautiful Pinot Noir so down there. So we haven't done South Australia. We haven't done South and Australia. South Australia has the most, do, I'm pretty do we confident. produce the most wine? Yeah, and, and we have yeah. some of like the least amount of people. So, you know, I'm not too sure what yeah, that- Yeah, we're uh, pretty lucky. The wine per person ratio is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, tonight it certainly is, I assure you of that. All right, moving onwards and upwards, what do we got here? Yeah, right. That's, um, that's fun. Yeah, okay. This one's gonna be tricky because, because this is really, really good. I'm gonna just throw it out there, Cabernet. Mm -hmm. You can smell this, like you can smell Australian Cabernet in particular, because Australian Cabernet is is quite distinct from from other other sort of formats of Cabernet. We do Cabernet in a really sort of particular way, and this style is is quite quite yeah. quite surprising. And it's definitely South Australian, so that you reckon? Yeah, for me, Cabernet. And and look, there is Cabernet from uh, Margaret River that's really beautiful, but it it doesn't have that salinity that um, we saw in the Chardonnay before. It's quite elegant. Beautiful tannin, yeah. It's really elegant. Yeah. Wherever this, wherever this actually grows, this is well suited. This is almost perfectly suited for, for this. And I, when I mean that, I don't, it actually, when we reference the old world quite a lot, we reference, mm. you know, France, we reference Bordeaux. Bordeaux is the home of Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot. These yeah. are the Bordeaux great varieties. And in South Australia, we're quite a warm place. And we make a really distinct style here in South Australia. This feels dainty. This feels very elegant. So either it's come from a very cool region, uh, or like cool climate, or a cool region. It's gonna happen happen in one of those things, like a cool vintage or something like that. What are we, hey. um, What are, I, I mean, would you say it's Cabernet? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's Cabernet for sure. Cool. What do we got? What do we got? Cabernet from, Laura's going South Australia. I'm going maybe Margaret River. Okay. Margaret River, somewhere, somewhere maybe a little bit cooler. Margaret River's famous for <laughs> Cabernet. Oh wow, we were like not even not even close. That party there. Not even close. We're we're on the Yarra Yaring Dry Red Wine Number One. Um, it's actually really. Oh, it, I mean, it ha does have Cabernet in it. It. <laughs> it does have Cabernet. But in it, it is a blend, and it's uh, Victorian. It is Victorian. Uh, Yarra, Yarra Valley, and, look, and another amazing little region that is literally only about an hour's drive, yeah. sort of northeast uh, from uh, from Melbourne. Um, and really interesting, so to talk about, so did you know, I didn't realize this, did you know that Yarra Valley is actually colder than Bordeaux? Did you know that it is actually colder than Bordeaux? So we have actually, a lot of people talk about Australia being like warm climates, warm regions, stuff like quantifiably yeah. so, based on the data, Yarra Valley is colder, but it's warmer than Burgundy. Okay. And it makes a lot yeah. of sense when you look at sort of Yarra Valley Pinots tend to be pretty robust. And you go, go down to Mon uh, Monton uh, Peninsula where they're close to the sea and they have that sort of, um, uh, especially down like Portsea Way. Oh, it's beautiful. And then you've got um, obviously the, the temperature um, uh, is regulated by that big by body of water, water, by the sea. Yeah. yeah. Whereas you don't have that here. You have a, an amazing sort of te di what we call a diurnal temperature shift. Mm. But um, here, so dry red number one, dry red number two. Dry red number one is a Bordeaux blend. It's, it's yep, Cabernet which Merlot. Means Cab and Merlot. And yeah. maybe a little bit of Cab Franc. And they've got Dry Red Number Two, which is a Rhone style blend. Mm -hmm. um, sort of like hedge their bets okay. a little bit. But this is the one that is consistently banging like yeah. over and over and over above and above and beyond. Amazing example. And also very, very young. Very, very young. This yeah, that'll broad a lot look, of Look, we actually had a uh, 2004 um, mm. with a friend of ours a couple of weeks ago. They were lovely enough to open it for us. And it just ages beautifully. Mm. Yeah, pristine. 
Absolutely pristine. All right. What so we, we still here? haven't done South We still Australia. haven't done South Australia yet. What's going oh. on? <laughs> um, the wine state, uh, not yet represented. All yeah. right, this is, this is interesting. Interesting. I think, I think the team are playing silly, silly buggers on us. They're trying to tri trip us up. All right. You know, you said something about blue fruit the, just before when yeah. I, I was like, that smells like blue fruits. Mm. Yeah, blue fruits, dark fruits, um, normally Shiraz uh, mm. gives that and certainly Barossa Valley in particular, like that really intense plum character. And that's what has been so unique about, about Australian reds. Yeah, is, is the, the, I guess, the pristineness of this fruit pristineness of of uh, and clarity of all of you know everything that goes into into these grapes here obviously we have the, one of the most amazing sunlight exposures in the world mm -hmm. you know no what are you what are you thinking what are you thinking if that ain't Shiraz mate if that is not Shiraz I don't know what is yeah, it's got to be Shiraz for me, that real sweet fruit. Um, and tannin though. And tannin. Soft. Yeah. I think Shiraz pretty much defines the idea of when people go, oh, that wine's really smooth. What they mean yeah, is that. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of Shiraz. Shiraz has a smoothness to it because rich, luscious, mid palate weight. It's just wishy washy and just, oh, it's just so seductive. It's like, yeah. it's like gigantic, you know, blocks of Cadbury. And you know how it just melts and like, oh, it's so tasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd bet my bottom dollar. It's definitely Shiraz. I'm hoping it's from South Australia because we're talking about Shiraz and we're talking about the place that has made Shiraz so incredibly popular. Yeah. Yeah. Globally, the, the built style, an entire yeah. reputation. What do you reckon? What do you reckon it is? I'm thinking Shiraz Barossa. as well. Yeah. Barossa. Barossa Shiraz. Um, right. Incredible winemaking, like very technically correct. Technically correct, yeah. Um, and not not over the top. Like there's, no, a, there's no, a bit of a depth a, going on yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, there's an elegant Well, you know, if anyone's going to be really good at making Shiraz, mate, it's probably going to be Henschke. <laughs> probably going to be Henschke. Now, you know a little bit uh, about this one because you used to work there. Yes. For, yeah. a, for a fair few years. Yeah. What, uh, Mount my, Eddleston? My first cellar job. Yeah, Mount Eddleston. Cool. So what, uh, what can you tell us about Mount Eddleston? Because uh, I, I don't actually know that much about it. So Barossa Valley is actually, or this is Eden Valley, um, very close together. Eden Valley is different because slightly higher elevation. Um, but a lot of old vines in Barossa, to the extent that they actually have a vine charter for vine age in the, in the Barossa and Eden Valley. Um, and this is over 100 years old. Um, and the, they've been making this wine since the 1950s. Um, the Henschke family, so sixth, sixth generation family winery. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, Just amazing. Just non-stop. It's like so much heritage. And if you think, if you've been making the same wine off the same vineyard for that many years, you're going to get pretty good at it. Well, they just got really good at it. They're, they're um, uh, Hill of Grace. Yeah. Uh, apparently people are getting 99, 100 points. I think it was the 2015 mm -hmm. vintage. Yeah. And Hill of Grace is what most people connect uh, Henschke with. Yeah. Um, but the, I, I've always personally loved Mount Edelston because the story of that is quite different. You know, Hill of Grace is a, it's a block of different varieties. Um, they may use the Shiraz to make Hill of Grace, whereas Mount Edelston is only Shiraz. So it's um, one of the first? One of the first single vineyard wines. And then also when Mount, Mount Edelston was made into a wine, that was the transition from when Barossa Valley was um, moving out of making fortified wine spirit into making dry table wine. Like Australia didn't make dry table wine until after the 1950s. And that was with the Poppy Little Parish movement. Basically, yes. uh, a whole bunch of people came across from Europe. It was war torn. We gave them free passage out here, and they brought with them tasty stuff. They brought mm. with them espresso machines, pasta machines, awesome, yeah. and a thirst for dry wine. Yeah. And completely revolutionised. But I think it was, I believe it was Cyril Henschke, I think was yes. the um, sort of proprietor at the time of, of Henschke, completely changed sort of the, the concept of, of what Australia yeah, with dry Yeah, he went over wine. to France, he had a scholarship over there um, mm. and saw what they were doing and said, well, I actually reckon we could do this in, in Australia, we could do this in Eden Valley. And have done very, yeah. very, very successfully. All right, moving onwards and upwards, or sideways. I don't, I'm not sure if you could go up from that, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, what are you guys? What are you guys drinking at home? Uh, we want to know uh, where, where you guys are. And have you have you guys been out here? What's what is your closest wine region? I think is going to be the um, most amazing thing. All right, what do we got here? Mm. It's another red. Hasn't got the same like 
plump fruit that we had in the last one. It's a little bit fresher. It's got like an iron stony. Mm hmm. I feel like a Grenache. Or do you reckon more structure? More, more structure, structure than, than a that. Grenache, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but kind of, yeah, right palette weight. Merlot. It could be a Merlot. It does have that blue fruited thing as well. Maybe there's a bit of Shiraz in this. Mm. Ah, I reckon, I reckon it's, it's, it's gotta be South Australian. That can't be the only South, South Australian South Australian, wine but it's not, it's, I don't think it's Shiraz. All right, quick, quick stab. What's, 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 where's your, where's, your, where's your gut feeling on this? Uh, let's go. Mer maybe Adelaide Hills Merlot? Adelaide Hills Merlot? I'm, I'm, I agree with Laura. I'm gonna go Adelaide Hills, cool, cool climate, amazing sort of structured Merlot. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, right. No, definitely not Merlot. It is definitely not. <laughs> to prove that we're doing these wines blind, that is definitely Cabernet. Uh, it is definitely, uh, John, uh, wins John Riddick uh, limited release. Uh, this is their flagship uh, yeah, Cabernet. Yeah, not just any Cabernet. Not just any Cabernet. That is absolutely yeah. for sure. This is their absolute. Do you know this is actually? And it's made by an amazing winemaker, Sue Hodder, mm -hmm. who's been at the helm for a number of years. But I'm pretty confident in saying this is like their top, literally one percent or two percent of grapes reaches this this height. Yeah. Like very, very, very rarely. Um, do we ever see anything? And do you know Kunawara is famous because of this thing called um, Terra Rossa, the strip of soil? And I'm pretty confident. Maybe the Riddick family was involved in in, in sort establishing of in establishing Kunawari, it. Yeah. Um, and I'll see if I can show you this uh, quick little graphic on the back. Um, that there highlights something. This this tiny little strip. It's two kilometres wide by twenty five kilometres long of red soil. It's mm. like a giant cigar shaped plot of land um, where basically all of the most amazing uh, you know styles of of, of obviously Cabernet. Yeah. Uh, really and super long lived. Like this is one of the most collected wines in yeah. Australia. Yeah, and two, yeah, two female winemakers, Sue and Sarah, um, yep. and they've both been working there for over ten years. Um, and I did an event Elegant. with Sarah last year, and she just said, you know, because you kind of think if you've been working with the same vineyards for ten years, does it get boring? Um, and her take on it was, well, there's just every year we're able to improve something, and there could be little tweaks, could be, you Make know, adjustments to up. the pruning or the picking time, and every year it's a little bit better. Um, which is amazing. You put all that experience together and that's why you end up with these amazing wines. And a bit of a hike. It's about three, four hours from, from Adelaide. Yeah, but, but another good trip between if you were going from um, Melbourne to Adelaide, mm. you could go through Coonawarra, you could come up through um, Robe on the way to Adelaide. But probably one of the most exciting things, to be honest, about this place is if you actually go down for it in terms of accommodation, um, there's Sue Bell mm -hmm. out of Bellwether have bell tents that yeah. you can go and stay in and like it's like glamping on yeah, drugs. Like it's so yurts. cool. Super yeah, cool. She does live music. Yeah, super cool. So you can totally make it like a long weekend or an overnight thing. Yeah. It's fantastic. And everyone I know that's been to Kunawara says the best part is all the wineries are on one strip together so you can just jump on a bicycle and Yeah and oh yeah totally. Where you want yeah. To. Yeah. Well oh, alright this this has seen a little bit of a different uh, <laughs> different wine making technique than than all the other wines. Mm-hmm. And it's bubbly. It's frizzante. It's very bubbly. It's super refreshing after having some That's, panic reds. That is super, super, super refreshing. Yeah. Um, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. This is not. This is not like this. This is something that is completely different. Completely no, different. It's a little bit edgy. Um, there's a small amount of funk there, um, but just so delightful. What do we got here? Because this is completely different. Mm -hmm. This is completely and utterly different. It is. It is something that's. Um, so it has 100%. bubbles, but it's not it has bubbles, but traditional it's not... sparkling like we have before. No, this is, this is um, something in the industry we'll call pet nap. Uh, and probably, ha, this is cool. And this is probably more illustrative of where Australian wine is starting to go, starting to move towards, and this is none other than the Basket Range Wine uh, Pet Nap. Uh, probably one of the, the more exciting of, of the producers. Very, very avant-garde uh, producers based in Adelaide Hills doing some absolutely incredible things. A little bit weird, a little bit funky. It's sort of like a merging of different types of techniques. I think the whole whole gist of this is trying to showcase 
the, the, the rawness of a particular side, yeah. the rawness of the grape. But what about that? What an entire like rainbow dissection across the entire country. Are you psyched about getting out there and actually? I mean, oh yeah, I'm I mean, so excited. We have our own wine region here at our doorstep, and I don't want to. I want to go out to Margs. I want to hit up yeah. Barossa. I want to hit up Eden. Eden, Victoria. Mornington. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, and sometimes these places because they're only an hour away, you don't necessarily make the effort. Like we're so used to going overseas and to having those experiences. Like this is the time to actually see. That's probably local. they're some of the most exciting Venice experiences I yeah. feel that we have at the moment, and it's and we're just getting better at it. and we, to see Australian wine where it is right now is just most fascinating. And we're super super psyched to be able to share it with you guys. So thank you so much thank for chiming you. in. Uh, thank you so much. Enjoy and, um, the rest of the stream. Enjoy the rest of the stream.